When I say the word voodoo, what do you think of? Pop culture has led us to believe that voodoo means something mysterious, malevolent force, evil or black magic. But in reality, voodoo is something quite different. So what is it exactly? And if it's not evil, why has it been portrayed this way for centuries? What we're talking about here is Haitian voodoo and New Orleans voodoo. They are not the same, but they are connected. Voodoo is a Haitian religion that originated in West Africa. It has elements of indigenous religious practices and Catholicism, and emerged out of the clash of cultures and the birth of new cultures in the New World, during and after the slave trade. It also played a pivotal role in the Haitian Revolution, which established the first independent black nation. Vodou has been understood as being at the very root of the rebellion and the revolt in 1791 that led to the War of Independence in Haiti and Haiti's ultimate independence from France. It was a Vodou ceremony that kicked off the insurrection, invoking the courage to break free from enslavement and to take over the island from the colonizing French. So from the beginning, Vodou is seen as at the very heart of revolutionary desire, intention, and ultimately power. And so you can imagine for this reason, leaders in the United States, leaders in Europe, um, really perceive Vodou as something that could really motivate revolt and ultimately pose a threat to the colonial order. This was before the abolition of slavery. The thought of slaves rising up and overthrowing their colonial masters was the stuff of nightmares for white Europeans and Americans. They absolutely understood its power on a social and military level, meaning they understood how Vodou was being utilized by leaders in the Haitian troops. Vodou became um, sort of symbolic of all that was un-Western, undeveloped, uncivilized, and all of these things. And that narrative has been used you know, up to the present day to justify imperial interventions in Haiti. The French weren't the last invading force to occupy Haiti. In 1915, after a series of political uprisings in the country and six different presidents over four years, Woodrow Wilson sent in the US Marines under the guise of establishing peace. But in the run-up to World War I, it was more about curtailing German influence in the region and taking control of Haiti's resources. The Marines treated them appallingly with overt racism and violence. But they also feared the Haitian people because they were different. And so what you had coming back to the US in the, um, in the 20s and 30s were these you know, wild tales of Vodou ceremonies and you know, sacrifices and blood rituals that then very easily became you know, not animal sacrifices, but human sacrifices or baby sacrifices. There are ways in which that unfamiliarity um, got transformed into something that made for good media. The cult of voodoo embodies the worship and fear of devil gods. Whole communities believing themselves under an evil spell indulge in wild orgies to cleanse themselves. It was around this time that travel writer William Seabrook wrote a book called The Magic Island, all about Haiti. He takes these wild tales from the US Marines and delivers them as fact to the American people. Zebra claims that he has seen zombies, right? People who have been um, zombified, turned into ghouls through the use of voodoo. He talks about promiscuity, black magic, and we take his stories as truth. So much so that Seabrook's fantasies appear in our academic journals here in the US. These articles came at a time when reconstruction was happening in the South and black people were coming into some political power. These sensationalized narratives about voodoo or voodoo as the Americans called it, were informing white people's irrational fears of what black political power might look like. Exotic, barbaric, the cult of voodoo. These voodoo ceremonies creates part of the hysteria that is used to support the idea in the South that black people shouldn't have these rights, that we get the rise of Jim Crow segregation and the disenfranchisement of black people. Investigating voodoo in Harlem reveals that nearly one third of Harlem's Negroes have become voodoo worshippers. All of that, all of those narratives are then lifted almost whole and full into one of our earliest horror films, which is White Zombie. 
from Haiti, land of the voodoo. White Zombie was one of the first ever zombie movies, and it opened the door to countless more films and books featuring the undead and other depictions of voodoo. The tie that binds most of these films is evil rituals. Often it's a large group of individuals, again, that writhing, you know, body outside, a big group, you know, around a flame randomly. There's a couple of snakes around people's necks. And then some kind of lust. Typically in these films, these are white men who are using black people and black voodoo to get to a white woman that they want. You will awaken to find life everlasting. The zombie film, for many Americans, was their first experience of voodoo as voodoo. Black magic and the zombie has just been this really useful metaphor for alienation, for evil that was beyond the control of good people, good Americans, good middle-class citizens. If we can only manage to keep them out, we can remain safe. Our values and ideals can remain safe. This is the story of voodoo that we've been told over and over again for centuries. But it's just not true. So what's the reality of this misunderstood religion? In Haiti, they actually describe themselves more likely as serving the spirits. There are many different analogies you can think of the Greek gods or of the Catholic saints. So they intervene in human affairs and they determine the outcome for particular individuals or families. So that's Haitian voodoo. New Orleans voodoo has a lot of similarities, such as its West African and Catholic roots and the devotion to the spirits. But it is a separate religion all of its own, unique to the black Louisiana community from which it grew. And it still remains an integral part of that community to this day. There's been more of a resurgence in recent years for people to reach back and take it seriously. Even people who don't consider themselves as practicing voodoo have some spiritual medicinal elements that come from that kind of tradition. Haitian voodoo in Louisiana or New Orleans voodoo are huge subjects to delve into and we've barely touched the surface. So I've put some extra links and further reading in the description if you want to find out more. If you want to see a film that respectfully represents Louisiana voodoo, then check out Casey Lemon's Eve's Bayou. It's a brilliant film. Finally, this is the last episode in this series of Black Enough. Thanks so much for watching, and if you want to see the previous episodes, go to the Guardian YouTube channel.